All right, hey guys, Dr. Hagmeyer here. Hypothyroidism is affected by many things, including your progesterone levels. And what makes this more complex and sometimes even more difficult, I think, for so many doctors is the fact that the symptoms of low progesterone often overlap with the symptoms of low thyroid gland. So let me share a quick story with you. Um, about six months ago, I began working with a woman who was diagnosed with hypothyroidism. Uh, she was being treated by her primary care doctor. Uh, she'd been on Synthroid, but still complained of fatigue. She still was losing her hair. She still complained of uh, the sensation of just being always like foggy, so this brain fog. She was depressed, and she was gaining weight at an alarming rate. Essentially, she was still experiencing all the same symptoms of hypothyroidism, yet she was on medication and her TSH levels were normal. And this happens all the time. I see this all the time in practice. So we began going through her history. And uh, again, this woman was a woman in her 40s. And so we began to, to really think about some of the other potential causes to these unresolved thyroid symptoms, right? She was having uh, a regular cycle. However, she did experience many of the typical PMS symptoms, right? She had breast tenderness and she experienced water retention. She had experienced changes in mood. She had, again, that brain fog. She had uh, menstrual cramping. She had heavy menstrual cycles. Uh, she had, again, that water retention that I, that I mentioned just a moment ago. And really, you know, a lot of her symptoms would, would just flat out intensify or just, you know, flat out just get worse right before her period. And so her primary care doctor uh, really told her that her thyroid levels were good, uh, again, even though he only checked her TSH levels. And so he wanted to basically put her on antidepressants uh, for the depression. And he thought that because she was gaining weight, that it would be a good idea uh, perhaps to start taking some appetite suppressants. And for all the PMS symptoms, he had mentioned that it would be a good idea to put her on a birth control pill, right? Again, all those PM, PMS symptoms were getting worse. So that's when she kind of reached out to me. She didn't really like this approach. Uh, she actually wanted to take approach that, that addressed the root cause. And so that's when she contacted me. Now, here's what I did, right? I ran a full thyroid panel, which means that I um, ran uh, a TSH, I ran uh, a T3, a free T3, I ran a total T4, I ran a free T4, I ran reverse T3, I ran thyroid antibodies, and we also looked at something called thyroid binding globulin levels, right? Because up to this point in time, again, her primary doctor would only run a TSH, no matter how many times she asked him. So while we were waiting for those tests to come in, uh, I also ran some testing on her adrenal glands, and we also ran a 28-day dynamic hormone mapping test, right? Now, if you've never heard of this 28-day uh, dynamic hormone mapping test, this essentially is a, um, a test that maps out the fluctuations of your hormones. So throughout, let's say, 28 days of your cycle, or 32 days, or 33 days, it is measuring your estrogen and progesterone levels every couple of days throughout the entire cycle. And then it gives us an average of the testosterone levels that are being produced in that cycle. And again, that was important because she had no sex drive. Uh, and so we wanted to see the average amount of testosterone over this entire cycle. We want to see what was happening with her estrogen levels, you know, if they were going up and staying up or, you know, what was happening with that. And that's really essentially what this test shows us. And again, it's a map of, of the cycle. So anyhow, we uncovered uh, through these tests that she did in fact have low T3. She had low free T3 levels. She had elevated levels of reverse T3. She had low DHEA, low cortisol, low 17-hydroxy progesterone. Again, all of these are markers that essentially indicate that there's an adrenal hormone imbalance. And we also found that she had super high levels of sex hormone binding globulin, which was binding up all her testosterone, all her DHEA, and basically robbing her of her sex drive. Now, if her doctor had put her on any kind of hormone pill, right, that contained estrogen, those sex hormone binding globulin levels uh, just would have went up. And as a consequence of that, that would have just bound up more and more of her testosterone. And then because of her elevated thyroid binding globulin levels being elevated, that also would have been uh, causing more thyroid problems, right? So that actually would have been the worst case scenario for this woman had she not been tested. So again, um, one of the things that's important here is, you know, you would never have known these things had she not been tested, right? So the more problems that we have with the thyroid, because that's what the pill can do, right? So the more and more uh, estrogen you take, the more and more that estrogen can cause the binding up of thyroid binding globulin, or TBG. Again, this is why it's important to test that. 
And then the high levels of estrogen can also bind up your sex hormone binding globulin, right? Now, the other thing was she was low on progesterone, right? So these hormone imbalances, unfortunately, these are very, very common scenarios for women in her 40s. Uh, and of course, these imbalances are some of the most common reasons uh, we see in women that have low progesterone, right? So while there's a lot, there was a lot going on in this woman, this is pretty typical for women in their 40s and 50s experiencing these symptoms. Um, remember in the, in the beginning of the video, I said, if you don't ovulate, you don't make progesterone. Now, again, here's why progesterone is so important to your thyroid. Progesterone and thyroid hormone have what's called a reciprocal relationship. And what this essentially means is that you need adequate amounts of, of thyroid hormone in order for your ovaries to make progesterone. And you also need adequate amounts of progesterone for optimal thyroid levels, right? Research shows us that, um, you know, when there's a problem with a progesterone deficiency, this can cause a decrease uh, in an enzyme that actually helps you make thyroid hormones, right? So progesterone deficiency causes a depression uh, of the enzyme called TPO or thyroid peroxidase enzyme. Um, normally what progesterone does is it actually upregulates it improves the, the function of this enzyme, which in turn allows for more thyroid hormones to be produced, more T4, more T3. And again, uh, that's an important enzyme. So essentially, if your TPO enzyme is low, or maybe it's depressed, or maybe it's not active, then over time, you're just not going to make enough T4, you're not going to make enough T3, and you'll suffer with the symptoms of hypothyroidism. And this can all happen while your TSH levels are completely normal. So the other thing is that that's not all progesterone does, right? Progesterone also affects uh, something called thyroid binding globulin or, or TBG, right? It's another one of the markers that really um, we should be measuring and, and doctors should be measuring all the time. And again, your thyroid binding globulin levels is important and why you should have your doctor run this test is, is simply because when there's a progesterone deficiency, you're gonna have problems with that thyroid binding globulin. Like so many women do, in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. So again, having that elevated thyroid binding globulin level uh, in the blood is just not going to help your thyroid. It's not going to help your thyroid symptoms, right? So essentially, uh, the less thyroid hormone that we have, the less thyroid hormone getting into the cells where they belong. And so again, you just don't want to have these high levels of thyroid binding globulin when you're hypothyroid, right? So now if you're wondering um, if your thyroid hormones, or I should say if your sex hormones can affect your thyroid gland, now you know that low progesterone can cause low thyroid, either by affecting your thyroid peroxidase uh, enzyme levels, which is again, that enzyme that makes T3 and makes T4, or it can affect your thyroid binding globin levels, all right? So what do you do about low progesterone, uh, low thyroid problems? Well, there are a few reasons for low progesterone that I think are important to understand before resorting to progesterone replacement, right? I'll tell you that uh, I don't believe in putting every single woman with low progesterone on progesterone replacement. Uh, and that's because there are a number of reasons why progesterone could be low, right? Just because a patient has low thyroid hormones doesn't mean automatically that they should be put on um, you know, or that they're a candidate for, for thyroid hormones. Um, it's just, you have to understand what the reason or what the cause for those thyroid hormones or low thyroid hormones are. Well, the same holds true for women with low progesterone. Just because a woman is low in progesterone doesn't necessarily make her a candidate for progesterone replacement, right? We need to stop treating patients with the mindset and this oversimplification that because a hormone is low, that we're just going to give it and it's going to fix all the problems. We need to understand why that hormone is low in the first place. Now, in some women, that low progesterone can often be caused by a lack of ovulation. That's a huge problem for many, many women. And taking a woman who's not ovulating and putting her on a birth control pill obviously makes that situation that much worse and creates even more of a progesterone deficiency and more thyroid problems, right? Remember what I said again in the very beginning. I said if a woman doesn't ovulate, she won't produce progesterone. And if we stop ovulation, you stop progesterone production, which is essentially what the birth control pill does. So another reason uh, for problems with progesterone production really comes down to things like, uh, or things that I should say that influence your LH levels or your luteinizing hormones. Sometimes this low progesterone and the LH problem is caused by a blood sugar problem. This could be something like dysglycemia. 
Maybe you're not insulin re resistant. Maybe you're not necessarily a full-fledged diabetic, but you're having fluctuations in your blood sugar levels like so many women experience, right? Uh, another common scenario is high prolactin levels. This can also affect your progesterone levels, right? That high prolactin levels can also affect your TSH levels, by the way. I've talked about that in a video. Sometimes uh, another problem that can uh, cause progesterone issues is an issue where a woman has polycystic ovarian syndrome. She's developed cysts on, uh, on her ovaries. Uh, sometimes uh, a situation um, like a nutritional deficiency or a malnutrition uh, issue is the culprit behind low progesterone. Sometimes an eating disorder like anorexia. Um, sometimes inflammation can do this. Sometimes stress can do this. Again, those adrenal glands. So these are, again, all things that are worth considering under this umbrella. I have low progesterone. What do I do? Right. So I can't say in any video, for that matter, what you should do if you have low progesterone. Because like I just mentioned, there are many, many different reasons and many causes uh, for low progesterone, just like there's many causes behind low thyroid. I just don't know what's happening in your body to cause the low progesterone or to cause the low thyroid in order to make those recommendations. To really be successful with treatment, whether you know this is you or your friend or, or you know a loved one, you need to know what the cause of the problem is. And sometimes it's a combination of things. And so my best advice in this scenario is to work with a functional medicine doctor who really understands this, someone who thinks outside the low progesterone, low thyroid replacement box, and someone who can really properly test you and investigate what your big picture is. Again, that big picture is the, the, the multiple reasons why you might have low progesterone, why you might have low thyroid, okay? So there you go. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I, I, of course, I hope you learned a few new things. Um, if you don't have a functional medicine doctor or you feel like the doctor that you're working with is, is just not looking uh, at the root cause, they're not investigating these things, or you have to go back to that doctor and tell them, well, what about this and what about that? Maybe you just hit a plateau. Reach out to my practice. Reach out to my clinic. Uh, we work with patients from around the world, and we can certainly help provide you with the answers that you're searching for.